So this entire week because of Valentine's Day has been dedicated to doing videos that are centered around romance, whether the romance be good or bad. Since today's actually Valentine's Day, we're going to talk about my favorite fictional couples. I often say in my videos that I don't particularly care for romance in books and that doesn't come across quite the way I mean it. What I usually mean is I don't like romance in books because the romance either takes over the story or the romance is super annoying. The particular couples that I'm going to mention are of course couples that make my heart melt just a tiny bit and because of the nature of the video and talking about couples, I know that it's going to be a bit spoilery. So what I'm going to do is in the description bar, I will list all the books whose characters I'm going to be talking about. I will also hold up the book initially so that if you don't want to be spoiled for that specific book, you can just skip on over to the next one. I do have a mix of couples from adult fantasy, young adult fantasy, manga, and video games, but I'm going to go ahead and start off with some couples from some manga, and it's gonna be from the series, this is backwards, Full Metal Alchemist. It is a bit ironic that I actually would consider this series to be a good one to pick up if you don't want romance in your stories because the romance isn't really a thing at all. It's very much either implied or totally at the end of the story. I am holding up two of our main fellas from the couples that I love, and that would be Edward and Winry and Mustang and Hawkeye. Let's talk about Let's talk about Mustang and Hawkeye first because I absolutely love their dynamic in general. The two of them are both such awesome characters by themselves and then when you get them together they are just such a force to be reckoned with and they have these like little little tiny moments here and there where it's clear that they very much have feelings for each other and I love the way the story ended where it didn't give you that moment where they're finally together. It just kind of showed you within their careers they have great positions and you just kind of see the two of them doing good for themselves and they're side by side and it's a little bit up in the air whether or not they're actually together romantically or not but I mean, they totally are. And then we have the couple that very clearly is together at the end of the series, and that would be Edward and Winry, and I just loved the ending for them. I'm a sucker for tragic endings, but I think this is one of my favorite happy endings to a story. Just that last little family photo where it's Edward and Winry and their children, I thought was so sweet. And I'm not even somebody who wants children, but it was just so nice because Edward for the longest time and Winry had such difficult childhoods and they were always kind of there for each other through those childhoods and then to see that you know Edward probably didn't even think he would have a normal life ever and then he not only got he not only got his body back but then to have such just a happy ending for him with with his wife and his kids I thought it was so sweet also Edward proposing using the rule <laughs> where it's I'll give you half of my life if you give me half of yours is one of my favorite I mean it's it's his version of a proposal and also him kind of confessing his love and he's so awkward and bad with his feelings and it's adorable the next book couple that I absolutely love comes from the book blood song by Anthony Ryan I have not continued the series I know that the series the events are going to change but within this first book Valen and Sharon I've never wanted a couple to get together more than those two. I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's a little bit a hint of the forbidden love, tiny bit, because they're, they're supposed to be celibate. They're a part of this group, and neither one of them is supposed to have a significant other. To have them have these encounters throughout their lives, and then when they finally do, when they finally get together, because the whole time I'm like, when are these two gonna get together? My goodness. And when they finally do, and Sharon, because they call each other brother and sister because of the particular group they're a part of. Everybody calls each other that. But when she tells him, like, I'm not your sister, I was like, ah, oh, okay. I just loved that line. I loved that line. It wasn't the sweet, it wasn't the sweet, beautiful kind of, it was like, um, Phelan, I think you're a hunk and I'm totally into you and we should do stuff now. The next couple that I love, I love this couple, would be from the Witcher series. The particular couple that I'm thinking of, you could probably tell by the books I pulled out, would be Geralt and Yennefer, and I know, I know a lot of Witcher fans are like, Triss is better. No, she is not, she is not. If you read the books, um, using magic to force somebody to do stuff with you, not romantic, not, no, Triss is the worst. Geralt is awesome, but he's a flawed individual, and what I love 
is so is Yennefer. That's what makes them both so great. I would never want to emulate their relationship and their relationship is super frustrating at times because of both of them. They're both really frustrating and they both have bad pasts and they're used to not being loved and they have sad backstories and all that stuff. It makes them very complex. It makes them feel so human. And so the two of them together, I just find to be really realistic. Like I said, I, I don't want to emulate the two of them, but I love the two of them. I know that the video games aren't canon, but I was so happy in the Blood and Wine expansion of The Witcher 3 when Geralt gets his little, his little house in Tucson and then Yennefer's there if you choose, you know, the correct love interest. Yennefer is there and I just was so happy because I do like to imagine that ending for them because the actual ending for them, it's, it's sad. Since we are on the topic of video games, I cannot talk about my favorite fictional couples without talking about the couple from Final Fantasy X. Talk about a tragic ending, because I'm gonna pretend X2 didn't happen. If we just talk about Final Fantasy X, talk about the most tragic love story. Oh my gosh, these two, these two. So they find each other in the most crazy circumstances, and Yuna is so, I'm talking about Yuna and Titus, in case it wasn't clear who I was gonna be talking about. Yuna is, Yuna is just, she's so sweet. She's so sweet, and she just wants good for the world, and she's willing to sacrifice herself. She's sacrificing everything for the good of the world. And then Titus is this happy-go-lucky individual who has he's got some dad issues and whatnot, but for the most part, he's had a pretty, a pretty good life. He's a famous sports star, and when he, when he meets her and he becomes one of her guardians, his entire life, he just starts to see the good in her and all she's willing to sacrifice and then and then what he knows is gonna happen if they really defeat sin oh my gosh it's so sad it always makes me so sad to think about titus is one of those characters that is i mean can you even argue about him being annoying i feel like we all know titus is a little annoying but don't we all kind of love him a little anyway and just seeing him make yuna happy made me happy and then and then he when she whistles at the end for him oh my gosh oh so sad it's so tragic next two couples that i'm going to talk about are from the mistborn series first couple i want to talk about is a couple that i don't feel like a lot of people even think of as a couple because it it was so short-lived but that would be sazed and tindwill sazed is a sweet cinnamon roll of a man he is so kind and so caring and also awesome when he Every now and then when he actually joins the fight, it's like, oh shoot, the Hulk's here, basically, because Sazen is awesome. And Tinwill is just so fiery and so intense and so in your face. And to see the two of them together and to find happiness together because t he never thought, Sazen never thought he would have that in his own life given his situation. And because of Tinwill's situation, they were so perfect and they're, they were kind of opposites attract and they were just, so happy together and then and then did will died and it was so sad as short-lived as it was i really loved says it in tinned will the other couple that i loved you can probably guess it would be vin and zane just kidding <laughs> vin and ellen i have to admit they could have been on my list of least favorite fictional couples because in book two in this book they're so frustrating there is absolutely no chemistry between the two of them and multiple times i just thought like do you guys want to just call it quits i mean the two of you have your plates are pretty full and then they push through this difficult time and seeing oh my gosh seeing where they end up and the fact that they are always in it together they were they were always always looking out for the good of the world and the way that they they pushed off of each other no pun intended for Mistborn fans. The way that they helped one another accomplish this goal of saving the world was incredible. And, the, and poor Vin never had time to really enjoy being married and having a husband and having a peaceful life and a good life. She never had the time in her own world. She never even got to see the world in, in a good place. But having that little kind of nod at the end where Sazed tells everybody, I don't think they want to come back. I think that they're at peace. It just made me so happy for them that they never had their happy ending while they were alive, but they had their happy ending in death and it was just, ugh. Why do I always like the sad stuff? Next couple I want to talk about is from Warbreaker, also by Brandon Sanderson. Sanderson, I think a lot of people say, oh, he's just not the best at writing romances. And I think 
what it is is that he's not really he just doesn't put the romance at at the front line it's not like you're flipping the page wondering like will they won't they but in warbreaker siri and sasebron ah they were just so precious weren't they precious sasebron is just so cute he's so cute oh my gosh and siri is just this happy-go-lucky kind of goofy girl and the two of them together are just lovely and given their situation it's one of those things where they're already basically together and he just doesn't he just doesn't know he just knows nothing and seeing her open his eyes to the world not just love but seeing seeing her help him see the world and and on top of it i mean she gets herself this really awesome man out of like because he's he's kind of super powerful and also super beautiful not that looks and power are all that matter i'm just saying it's just it's a nice bonus for our very sweet protagonist of Siri. Let's talk about a couple that doesn't make me sound super shallow now. And I'm gonna talk about a couple from the Seven Realms series by Cindy Williams Jaima. The couple that I'm referring to would be Han Alistair and Reza Anna Mariana. The two of them, honestly, I wouldn't say that I absolutely adored them as a couple. They bickered a lot and understandably so, but the thing that made them make this list was the scene where they profess their love to each other and i am not a super mushy gushy kind of gal but that scene was really really well done i just i really liked it because the things that they were saying about each other they genuinely loved each other and they were they were professing their love to each other by pointing out all the little things that they just can't get enough of in the other person that they really loved the other person for who they were and I loved that. It wasn't some superficial... Now, it sounds like I'm going against what I said when I was talking about the Warbreaker couple, but it wasn't just like, you're so pretty and you're so handsome. And it wasn't just, I just can't get enough of looking at you. It wasn't that. It was just, oh, your mannerisms and who you are and your beliefs and your drive and all the things that you should want to like about the person you're with. Those were the kinds of things that they were saying they loved about the other person. And I loved that. The last fictional couple I'm gonna talk about is one that I think is gonna be a tad surprising because it is a hint of insta-love. And that would be from Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Okay, I will actually defend Laszlo and Sarai by saying that yes, it happened very quickly. They definitely fell in love pretty much instantly. But I, I don't, sometimes, I'm not saying insta-love is, I don't, like insta love but i didn't think that they immediately were like i'm in love with this person it's just they were instantly fascinated by the other person and that fascination when they got to know each other it turned out they really really cared about the other person and i know it happened really fast but hey it's basically a fairy tale and things are very dramatic in fairy tales and i feel like maybe i'm making excuses because i just really wanted the two of them to be together they are both really kind people sarai a little less so then Laszlo. Laszlo is about as sweet as can be, and Sarai is somebody that I think is maybe almost more level-headed than Laszlo, but she is always willing to try to help the other person across from her out. She really wants to help people, and she sees people's suffering, and she sees people's pain, and she wants to help end it, and Laszlo is the kind of person that just wants to believe in happily ever after. And the two of them together are just, I, I'm overusing all of the good words, but they're just so, they're so precious and cute. And I was, I, I just wanted them to have their nice, happily ever after. That's it for 10 of my favorite fictional couples. Let me know some of your favorite fictional couples. Feel free to do the same thing basically that I did, right? The book that you wanna talk about that has the couple or the video game or the movie, whatever you'd like, feel free to write that at the top first and then maybe enter a couple times and then talk about it so that way nobody gets spoiled. Thanks so much for watching though. I hope you have a great Valentine's Day. If it's not Valentine's Day when you're watching this, I hope you just have a great normal day and I'll see you all later. Bye. Thank you.